see, I've, I've actually owned, um, I've owned about three of them. And always, because I used it all the time, I always had one sort of sitting in there spare, and I had, had quite a newish one though. I think they brought out the black one that was around for a while. And then, I, you know, I don't use it as much now. I still do use it. I, I actually used it last week because I just felt like using it. And this, you know, this is what I grew up using really. I know that machine like the back of my hand. And the, the SP12 has just got a certain sound to it. It was a bit like the Alan Brax one you did, wasn't it? it you know. That's that's basically sort of a lot of the Rhythm Masters records were just made like that. It'd be sampling records, pitching down and getting that sort of dirty um, bit crusher thing that it's just so much more natural on there. But I've just got my hands on this and um, I've just started to mess about with it. It's a it's a really nice bit of kit. Um, funny enough, Akai coming down tomorrow to see me to, uh, to give me a couple of lessons because it's it's quite. Um, it's not like um, I used to use a uh, 60 back in the day, but it's, this is a different. Um, it's a different animal. There's so much going on. It's like hard disk recording everything in and out. And I've got um, one of my old laptops here, which sort of just sits there. And um, basically, we've got this set to that, and that goes to. Um, there's not that rewires as well to this. I've forgotten, I've forgotten what the software is. It's like Motu's Volta, Expert Sleepers, yeah, it's a whole bundle. So basically we've got that set up and that um, sort of goes from MIDI out here into this box. Then we've got it um, CV gated to um, uh, uh, Motu 828. So we can use the outputs and that will send voltage like to the ARP. So obviously I sum with the desk. Um, the, what I use this for is more of um, I use it more as a preamp unit. It's um, Phoenix Audio stuff. They've got um, really good sort of transformers in there. It's all class A. It's a bit like the sort of some Ives transformers in the Neve equipment. And I think, you know, we, we got the, uh, with the old synthesizers and you've got the balance and unbalance problem. Sometimes, especially with the old synths, you plug them into a desk, you've got really low levels. I've got, I've got a small little Av Avalon DI box down there, which is nice as well. But I actually, I actually bought that mixer because it was just for a, a portable setup and we thought well why don't we try it out um, why don't we try it out and just use it for the Simpson it just sounds really nice on them it just gives them an oomph and we, we've sort of, we've kind of set it with a patch base so it goes it can go directly into the computer the Simpson can go directly into the computer or it can go through here to the computer this can go into this patch bay then you can connect any of this stuff to it it's um Flexible, yeah, very flexible. The SSL is, you know, it's it's the magic button. Everybody, I mean, most most records you hear in the charts and most pop records, most pop records that have been made over the years have the SSL magic button on them. It's just a compressor. That, it's like a it's like a glue. You you know, it's I'm, the set the setting I use is very small and the, the the meter hardly hardly moves. It's a really small setting, but it just it just whacks a mix like that, bang, in your face. Still keeps a punch, you know, rounds the bass off nicely. Um, yeah, I've been using the SSL in all my mixes this year. My, tr my, main, my main tracking compressor is 1178. This is, that, that 1178 is actually the third one I've owned. And um, that one has just got a sound of its own. I've, I've, the other two I had, they, they were okay and you know, you just get bored of something, you sell them. But I got this one and I was like, wow, this was lucky. They do, the thing with Yuri compressors, they all, they all sound different. You, it's, um, it's a bit Russian roulette with them buying them. But I've got that one and it's a, it's a bit of gear I never sell. And basically I track any sort of stereo signal I, I track through that machine. Um, it, it's just got such a beautiful sound to it. I use the Neves on just about everything. <clears throat> and of course they've got, they've got the great mic my preamps in them as well. Do you send synths through them and stuff occasionally? Like oh, oh yeah, definitely. Well, I mostly, like, you know, the, the other projects I was talking to you about that need to be a bit, I EQ everything on them. They're quite, the frequencies on them are idiot proof because they just, they snap into place. Um, but there's, I don't know, there's something about the originals, the, the reissues, they're good, but they're not quite there. You know, I've, I've got a UAD card in my computer as well, which, you know, I, I love the UAD card. It's, 
you know, the, like the Roland Dimension D plugin I use on everything. It sounds great. And me and my friend, we, we did actually do an AB test to the 1084s on the UAD card to them. And uh, they've, done, they've actually done an amazing, amazing job for a plugin. The, fr the frequencies are bang on, but it just don't have that creamy bottom end, so you just get out of Neves. But, they, you know, they're, they're a sort of after a bit of kit now, and they're just... My converter system is a bit strange because um, obviously I'm a Logic user, so you know I haven't got that. So the PCI card that I've got is um, an old Motti one. I think it's a 44. Um, for you know, as far as um, PCI cards go, the Motti is, is quite a stable card, but it's just um, the converters just don't sound very good. They just don't have that big stereo image. But then again, there's a price tag on that. So obviously I needed kind of, I've got, I think it's a 32 in and a 32 out system to my desk of high quality conversion from Logic, which is good. Um, my fate, I mean, the Lynx is, a, is an amazing converter and, and for, it's, it's a good bang for the buck because it's, you've got 16 ins and 16 outs on it and you can pick them up for, I don't know, two, two and a half grand. But my, my, my favorite sounding one is the uh, Prism, Prism Orpheus. Uh, I love that machine. It's just got so much depth to the sound. It really has. It's, you know, I've, I, I, I like the Apogees and stuff as well, um, but there's something, there's something about the uh, Prism, it just really, really holds all the creaminess of the sound. It's so really do you make a decision on what goes where? Yeah, I, I, I do. All, all, the, all the recording and all my tracking goes into the Prism, and the master recordings go back to the Prism too. The AMS is a, it's just a classic sounding delay. I, I actually did have um, the TC2990 as well, but I, I got rid of it that recently. I've actually owned a couple of them over the years, and it's like, well, I only need really sort of one digital analog delay, kind of, and the AMS hands down every time. Uh, System 100. Yes. Yeah, I carried that back from Japan. I, I used to own one before, and I lost, I lost it in my fire, and it was it was always a it was always a go-to synth for me for just getting really weird wobbly bass sounds and I've always I've always loved it so but I never had this expander before so I, I bought the expander back I, I don't know how I got away with it on the plane but I did <laughs> that that machine's just got a sound of its own you, there's the sound you know the actual quality of the sound the delays and it's just really lush you can't you can't get nothing quite like it not in my eyes anyway. I, yeah, I use that a lot, and I, I have done for years. I've used them. Um, a few of the other bits I've got, I've got, I've still, I've still got my trusty Emu sample that's turned on. <laughs> I still, I still use it quite a lot, to be honest. Um, I just like the filters on it. It's, it's, you know, it's the difference from using that to using the ESX24. Say, um, the ESX24 I like too. But it's a, it's a good machine, so I still use that. And machine as well, you, you use that a lot. Yeah, I, I use I, I use machine a lot, and I I take that away with me a lot as well because it's just um, it's just handy just to have it there. And I like I've always been a drum machine person. I like to I like to program drums. So <laughs> mini NS10s. Yeah. Was well, that it's actually a friend friend of mine who's got the studio next door. Um, he he had a pair set up. The studio about three weeks ago and they, they sounded really good and it's like wow they, they're great and my friend saw a pair on eBay so I bid on them one them 100 quid but they, they do sound really 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 good they well they just sound like a mini version of the NS10s which it which I think you know if you're listening to low level music and you want to make sure you, like your kick drums and stuff are punching through it's a good way to hear you so saw you've got your 90s going through it's good to hear Studa. You no. use that a lot. Yeah, it's my secret weapon. Because uh, UAD brought out the um, the tape simulator. It's that's a, that is an amazing plugin. It's it's really good. But basically, what what that's doing, I do that with a half inch tape. And all right, it's a bit extreme, I know. But then, you know, I only make dance music for Christ's sake. <laughs> But then again, it's not, you know, it's not something I use, like doing my house stuff. Like I said, I'll just stick to my laptop and keep it very, very simple. 
Um, but yeah, my other projects, I, I basically run every single sound through that now. But that consists of my, my chain was the URI, no, it'd be, no, it'd be sorry, the EQs that go into a couple of the Neve EQs into the URI, into here. Um, of course, uh, you've got a tape delay. So what, what you do is um, you put the tape machine into the converter, you record it, so it's a little bit out, so you just move the audio back. And basically, so, you, so that the track stays in time because tape obviously goes out of time. So you just get the sound of the tape because of the repro, repro head comes back. And to be honest, um, all that um, digital top ends that we suffer now, which I was showing you earlier on the Poltex we cut, it just does it automatically and it puts this massive bass on. But then you've got to have them lined up properly as well. And does it take much keeping reliable or is it fairly good? No, it's, it's been really, really good. As long as um, each, each session you use it, because if we, mostly we, we, we've programmed the record and then we'll get all the stems and spend the day recording each one in it. So it's a very boring day, you know, because you're just waiting for each track to be done. Um, what we do is just clean the machine before each session, clean all the heads, make sure. But it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty well behaved. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a two-inch tape machine down there because that is just too much hassle. You got, you got to line up 24 tracks every time, and Jesus, and the maintenance on that and keeping the head stack clean, and but that's that's perfect. It's a half-inch two-two-track, run it at 30, and yeah, it sounds amazing. And it, you know, because them tape simulation machines they brought out units and stuff. Well, once buy a tape machine for the same price because it cost about three grand anyway. So you probably might get a tape machine cheaper. MS-10, MS-20, and the MS-50. Basically, they're all patched together. So you've got <laughs> an, MS, an MS system that, with a massive sound, because you've got, you've got an oscillator on here, you've got two oscillators here, and you've got an oscillator here. And you can, obviously, there's a mixer on here. Everything sort of runs into this patch bay here so there's um the cv and gates go into here and the cv gates go into each one of those so you know you you can control it from here say and it triggers all the synths at once i've owned all three of these it, oh, these are new what new ones now i lost i didn't have the 10 i sold that thing i had the 20 and like, i lost that i lost that in a fire this is another one i bought and 50 I lost as well, but um, a friend of mine gave that to me. So I did own the whole system, um, sort of back end of the 90s, but I never really, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing then with this kind of stuff, and I, ne I never had them connected up together. But I've always loved the sound of the M MS-20. Yes, it's um, another, yes, yeah, another one we use uh, quite a lot, actually. What, what do you mainly use it for, would you say? Um, we've, we've actually been using it with a numerology set, set up quite a lot, and it's just um, it's just got some great tones to it. Um, it's, quite, it's quite weird how you can um, select all the filters to different oscillators and stuff, um, and you, get, you, sort of, you start getting weird um, just sounds by accident like really good really good sounds out of accidents you're like wow you know how did i come up with that and the 15 you had a five last time was it you got 15 now yeah i've got 15 um <clears throat> the, the, re the reason i got i got the fifth 15 um because it's got the um the two filter sections on there and well, obviously it's got it's got two um, VCOs on this as well, and you can really you can really control you can really control them um, with, with the gates and stuff. Um, I've got this. The things with these, they're, they're CV gates, uh, but the CV gate they put on them on separately. So I've done a sort of bodge job with the wiring at the back and put them both in so they run together, but. Yeah, you can. It's it's kind of where you can get some really sort of really good lead sounds out of this, and you can get a really good sort of acidy basses that's not so 303, but they're quite powerful filters on here. It's actually a very little powerful keyboard that. 
was it the five that inspired you to buy to, to get the, like the next one? Next sort of couple of steps up. It was because uh, the five was just a really, really simple sort of mono synth with uh, one oscillator on it. But it was, I mean, the, os the oscillator on it was just really, really powerful. Um, <clears throat> but it was having the two oscillators, but it was more the fact that the, the two filters. Um, and of course, you can do the high pass, low pass, and mix them. Uh, but it's, you can get some great sounds out of that. And the Jupiter 6. Uh, yes. And did you get the six over the eight, or or was it just you haven't found an eight yet? Or? Um, I um I didn't I don't think I really bought it over the eight. Um, I'm I've always had a lot of rolling keyboards. And I've I've got the MKS eighty with the the rack over there, and I've I've had that for years, and that. They always said the MK80 is in, sort of in between the six and the eight, but I don't think it is. It's it's a great sounding machine, but I, I think the, uh, the the filters are a bit weak on the MK80. But you know, it's it's a great. It's sort of one of them sims I wouldn't sell. It's just it's, it's just I've done so much with it over the years. Um, the six. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know what I bought it actually, but I really like it. I really like the six. Um, I think, you know, Jupiter 8, I, I, there's no way I'd pay five grand for one of them. I, I totally think that's overpriced. Um, if I was going to spend that on a synth, there's a, a, I would go for OBX or something. It's just a bit more of an interesting sound to me than, a, than the rolling stuff. But I, I think, you know, with a, lo a lot you can do with the 6, you can do with the 8 anyway, I think. You know, it, 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 don't get me wrong, the 8, it's a, it's a beautiful keyboard, but... You know, I, just, I had one in here last year for a few months, and but that's you know I get I get stuff coming in and out through the door all the time, so it's sort of you you do sort of think okay, but what do I want to want to stay permanently? Because um, you know when when you sort of invest in these machines, if you're going to spend five six grand on a synth, you've got to make sure it's a a decent machine, you know. So moving on to the desk, I mean we mm. talked about this last time because it was. Damaging the fire, but only cosmetically, luckily. Yeah, I, I got lucky really because it was, it was sort of all sealed and nothing got through, and I just got it. Um, I just got it completely overhauled and brought it back to brought it back to how it was. How would you describe the sound of this desk it, it, compared to say uh, even SLR <coughs> ones that people know the sound of? Okay, um, it's, it definitely it's definitely got its own sound. That's for sure. Um, it's a little, I think I w it's definitely a bit more punchier than SSL, but not as punchy as the Neve. It's, it's sort of in between the two. Um, the, in the EQs Quite on clean. it, it's it's in the middle again. I think it's it's the they're, they're all inductor based EQs on there, and <laughs> the bottom end has really got a, a tough punch to it. It's a very very powerful desk. It's like twenty eight dB a headroom on there. Um, it's in it's in the it's in the middle between the Neve and the SSL, but they they were really popular back in um, back in the eighties. So Elton John recorded a lot of his stuff on these, and there's been a lot of big hit hit records made on these desks. So, so despite the troubles you would have with getting it out, would you would you swap it for anything else? Like... Um, probably uh, when I if I do build well, I will build another studio one day for sure. Um, the next one I build would probably be in the countryside somewhere with much more live facilities and stuff. I would probably go, I would probably get an SSL 4000 because it just, you know, I, you know, I, I, li I like classic sounds and it's like u using URI compressors and stuff. I, you know, there's a lot of things on the market now like distressors and stuff, but you know, well, I don't know, why bother when you just use the proper ones? Take us through the. Uh the moment is you've blown the general X up recently, but they're yeah. going to be repaired. Yes. <laughs> and uh, pioneers, you were sort of testing these out for yes. pioneer, and ended, yes. up, ended up quite liking them. Yeah, I, I do. Um, I mean, I was I was surprised because, you know, pioneer make all oh right. They, well, we all know them for like sort of high, home hi fi's, TVs, um, and kind of yeah, and more more recently. Um, yeah, the CDJs and the, the DJ equipment, which you know has become very successful for them, 
and uh, yeah, they were they were they were trying to they were trying to build a speaker that was in between um, um, a DJ speaker and a studio monitor. And Jason, my friend that works at Pioneer, brought them down last summer. And he brought these and a, a pair of fives uh, to test out, and we set them up over the other side actually by the computer and. Um, I was like, wow, these sound really, really good. They're like really, you know, I mean, I think they're about £800 a pair and, you know, they're, they're worth every penny. The, the great thing about them is that there's a little knob for them down there as well, so you can um, put the EQ, EQ in, EQ out under this mound of wires. So, yeah. So it's got, um, yeah, it's input selector, new EQ. Um, and it's, yeah, there's, a, there's an EQ on the back to, to adjust to the room. It's just, it's just a bass and a treble. But, you know, if you just want a little bit more punch in your room, you can add a little bit, or the too much tops, you can take a bit off. But, yeah, I'm, I, re I really like them, and, you know, I've got, I've got a pair set up now. And the thing is with, with NS10s, I, lo I love mixing on NS10s, but after, you know, f sort of four or five hours, your ears just, oh, they hurt so much. And... I, you know, the older I'm getting, I'm starting to notice it more. So, having these to work on as well just takes the pressure off a bit because they're just, a, you know, that little bit cleaner and haven't got that harsh mid range going in your ears all the time. And how long have you been here now? Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. When does the country house get built? <laughs> in ten years. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's a difficult one because when you're so used to a place to move it. I mean, I moved, before I got to here, I moved my studio five times and it was, it was the worst thing in the world. You know, it's, you'd, spend, you'd spend weeks, months um, trying to get your sound back where you were so used to a room and you, you know your sound. And, you know, it, uh, I don't know, you could have the greatest um, soundproof control room in the world, but it does, you know. But then, then again, over the years, what, what I've learned, you know, even when I go to other studios and work, I sort of seem to get my head around it a lot quicker now than, you know, I did back in the day, so. But I, I would probably, I don't know, I don't know how long. But, yeah, that's, that's what will happen one day. If, if my new projects go to plan, I will, I will need more space. That's the thing. I need some more uh, live recording facilities. You know, instead of, you know, having to go to other studios to do that all the time, but, which I, I hardly ever do now. We can get away with it down here. But, like, if you yeah. wanted to do, say, drums or... Yeah, it's, uh, I think that's the only thing that can't be recorded in here is yeah. drums. You know, we, we get a good vocal sound in here. And you've got the little vocal booth. We've got, room got a vocal booth. And, we, you know, we can put, you know, we've got, some, we've got some Marshall stacks in there as well, so we can... Close the door and get the guitars in here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 